What's going on guys? And welcome back to the Lions Den with your host, Alex. Um, first and foremost, I hope you guys had a great weekend. Hope you're doing good. And if you're not doing good, that's perfectly fine. There are many times in my life where I was at rock bottom and I learned more in rock bottom than I learned when I was at the top of the mountain. Okay, so today I wanna just show you three of my favorite ab exercises. But before we go into them, I, I'm gonna teach you something about abs that you can hold on for the rest of your life. Okay, number one, everybody has abs. Everybody has abs. Everybody has this, okay? You have abs, okay? The only problem is you have a lot of fat in front of it. That's it. So whenever you're asking someone, what is the best ab exercise? There is no best ab, ab exercise because what you're ultimately looking for is like you're looking for an ab exercise that's gonna help you develop abs. It, it doesn't matter what ab exercise you do if you still have body fat. If you, that's why you can see somebody on the street that's super lean, super lean, and you can see their six pack. Like, damn, that guy has abs. No, he just has no body fat. Okay, that's number one, understand. You all have abs, but you have a lot of body fat. Number two, most of you guys are not getting the abs you want because you're just inconsistent. You literally leave abs to the end of your workout. And so by the time you're done hitting chest, arms, back, legs, you're like, ah, let me just do like one set of abs. And you're like, that's it, yay. And I'm like, bro, no, no. And so you leave them at the end because you might tell yourself, oh, it's all in the kitchen, it's all about diet. You'll come, you'll come up with some sort of excuse not to do the ab exercise, okay? So that's mistake number, that's, that's number two, okay? Number three is understand that it, it might take a while, okay? Patience, patience. Okay, might take a while because it's gonna come down to your nutrition and how consistent you are, okay? If you're not consistent, if you're not watching your diet, it doesn't matter how many times, you, you can do abs one day and do like, yeah, I did like 100, 200 sit-ups today, but if you miss three, four, five days in a row, you're like, okay, there you go, that. And then you go eat a bunch of crap, there you're gonna add body fat, you're not gonna take away body fat, and you're just not gonna develop it. And here's the thing, if abs is your goal, okay? If your abs is a goal, then make that the goal. A lot of you guys might be, should I bulk or should I cut? Should I bulk or should I cut? Because on one spectrum, you wanna be big. Huh. One other spectrum, you wanna be uh, shredded, right? So you're in the middle, all right? You're in the middle and you're like, I don't know which way to go, which one day goes by, another day goes by, one day you'll bulk, one day you'll cut. One day you'll bulk, one day you'll cut. And so what ends up happening with that, you get nowhere. You're just being pulled by both ends. What is my advice? Coming from my perspective, okay? I was leaner. I, I was like 120, 125. I've been working out since I was 15. So I was really skinny. So my goal was just to put on size. So in the range of 125, if you're below 150 pounds, I, I say just lean bulk. Like get up and weight. Like below 150, like get up and lean weight. I, like 150 is not that heavy, okay? And so if you're above 150, Cut down, it all depends on your height too. See, it all depends on your height. So I, it's hard for me to say, if you're this much weight, then cut it, because weight doesn't mean shit. I woke up at 164 this morning. Weight doesn't mean anything, okay? If you have a gut, shred fat. If you have a gut, shred. Don't bulk, don't lean bulk, don't try to get big. Just sh shred down, lean down, get your abs to show, and then from there, bulk up, okay? Because once you get rid of most of the fat and you're lean, then you can slowly start adding, it's called reverse dieting. Then you can start slowly adding more calories in and then lifting heavier, and then you can just add some decent muscle, okay? If you're skinny, all right, like you look at yourself and you're skinny fat, so here's the thing now, if you're skinny fat, shred down. If you consider yourself skinny fat, shred down, because you still have some fat. You have this, but you're kind of skinny. Skinny fat, shred down, okay? The only, the only way I would recommend if you do bulk up is if you're skinny. All right, if you're skinny, you came from me, you're 125, 130, just start eating, and but just don't, don't do a dirty bulk. Do not do a dirty bulk. I don't believe in dirty bulking. I've never dirty bulked because I don't wanna look bad. When you eat like shit, you feel like shit, you look like shit. Simple as that. But I'm, and, 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 dir and dirty bulking is an excuse for people to eat a lot of calories. Take your time with it. You can eat a lot of clean calories and still look decent. All right, that's what I've done my whole life. I've always leaned bulked. Because you just don't wanna feel like shit. Because to me, a dirty bulk is mean, means you're in a hurry. In a hurry to what? Get really fucking fat so you can cut down? 
you know? So when it comes to that, don't really focus on, on, the, uh, on the aspect of dirty bulking, okay? So again, number one, everyone has abs. Get rid of the fat. Number two, consistency. Stop leaving it towards the end. If you really want core, dedicate, dedicate every single, and I'll show you guys, dedicate every single day to doing, six days a week, doing decline sit-ups, and I'll show you how to do them. Because if you do decline sit up, this is my philosophy. If you do decline sit ups, four sets of 25, that's 100. You do that six days a week, six days a week, that's 600 sit ups a week. That's in two weeks, that's 1,200. In, in a month, that's what, 4,800? Don't quote me on my math. 12, 12, yeah, yeah, 12, 12. No, it's not. 2, 2, 4, 2,400. Should be 2,400. No, give me a second. Do the math, okay? 600, 600 is 1,200. Another 1,200, yeah, it's. 2,400, 2,400 sit-ups a month. My bad, I'm, I'm, I'm horrible at math. All right, 2,400 sit-ups a month. Do that for six months, you're gonna have a good core, but just don't stop. So I'm gonna go right into the, um, the decline sit-ups. I'm gonna show you like, th like three of my favorite ones, okay? Okay, so when it comes to decline sit-ups, watch. Like, there's a decline, okay? All the way down. You can go to the gym, and you can go into the decline um, bench press, and just, put your legs in there, and I don't want you to go all the way down. If you go all the way down, you kind of hurt your back. I just want you to keep your hands here, go about halfway, then up. One, two, three, four, five. So the reason we just go halfway is to keep tension on the core. There's nothing wrong with going all the way down. But when you come here, tension, you see the tension? When I go all the way down, it releases the tension. So you stay here, one, two, three. So you're literally gonna do four sets of 25. And the best advice I can give you is, and do that between sets. So if I was doing, I was doing shoulders today. So I'll do 25 and then I'll go do some lateral raises. As soon as I'm done with lateral raises, as my shoulders take a break, I'm gonna go right into my core. With, by the time I'm done with lateral raises, I'm done with my sit-ups, that's it. They're done, don't leave them to the end, superset them. It also gives the main muscle that you're working time to recover, okay? So that's the first one. Okay, so now we're gonna do hanging knee tucks, okay? It's gonna target the lower, the side, and the side, okay? Hanging knee tucks. You come to a pull-up bar, here, knees together, one, turn to the side, one, turn to the other side, one, and then repeat. Now, these are, these are really difficult, super difficult, especially if your core is not strong. I don't care if you do one, two, three, four, five. I don't care if you just do five, rest, one, two, three, four, five. I don't care. One, two, three, four, five. Why is it five? <laughs> Anyways, okay? So I don't care if you just do six at a time, five, it doesn't matter. Just do about 20, four sets of 20, done. So now we're back on the decline. I have a 10 pound dumbbell. We're gonna work on the obliques, okay? All I want you to do is take this 10 pound dumbbell like this, not like this, like this, lean back, twist. But when you twist, when I'm here, when I'm on my left side, squeeze your right side. When I'm on my right side, squeeze with your left side. You're, you're not just moving the dumbbell. What's pulling you is your obliques. Pull with my left side. See this? Pull. Too many people just do this, and they don't use their core. Take your time, boom. Boom. Take your time, do it again, on the decline setup, how many? About 25. One, two, three, 25, four sets. And there you have it. Now we've, now we've hit the upper, the obliques, and the lower. How about it? If you like this video, hit the subscribe button.